Unmuted. Okay, I apologize for this delay. The problem is uh, the switch I'm connected to is not connected to the same switch as my PLC. Give me one second to run a cable, and I'll be right back. I apologize. Okay, uh, we're back. Can everyone hear me? Yes, okay. I apologize for that. Uh, I think probably I read an article the other day that said 45% of all errors are uh, on the lower level, which would mean that we have a wiring problem. And I did. I got my cables crossed, and I apologize for that. But uh, let's go back here to project settings. Um, we put the PLC name in correctly. Uh, notice that now that we are on the network, <clears throat> I can ping the IP address of my controller. And I re return my data very quickly. And that's good. We can hit get OPLC information. Notice we are on TCP IP call. And we returned the model number and the OS. And this is good. We're now communicating over Ethernet. Okay, so we can hit exit. And now we can do things uh, the same way we would do with Serial. If we want to download the program again, we can download. And notice that instead of Serial, we have ETH call here. And we're now downloading the program. It's the same program. So we're probably going to get a little message that tells us we're downloading an identical program. But we are indeed connected over Ethernet. Now this is nice because with the IP address and a network that is set up correctly, meaning uh, if we are communicating over the the internet. Okay, <laughs> I see just the message. What did you do wrong again? Uh, the problem I had was my computer was not connected to the same switch as the PLC. Uh, when I plugged in the wire, I plugged it into the wrong port. Uh, I needed to plug it into the correct uplink port. So I just needed to move the cable over. Um, it, was a, it was a networking technical uh, issue. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so we are now going to go online with the controller just like we did, like we would do with Serial, and we see we're connected uh, very much the same way. Now, one important consideration here is if we're going to download a new program, if we download a program that does not include a Ethernet setup, we won't be able to connect to it again. So it's very important to always maintain the same parameters we're using when we're connecting to the controller and downloading new programs. Let's do another uh, example here. Let's just put some text on here just to show. We'll say hello. Oops. And we will put a picture on the screen as well. Uh, a nice house. Okay, so just to put something on the screen, and let's download this again. I'm just going to use my download button here. Okay, I see one very important question here. Uh, if using MIs to enter IP address and changing the field, do those functions need to be reinitialized? Yes, this is very important. Um, we can change the values that are linked to the card initialization, but unless we, we pulse these blocks, we won't actually change or update or reinitialize uh, the card settings. So the solution to that is to add a positive transition or control of some bit. Uh, we can change these anytime we like. We can't just change the values though. Once we change them, we need to energize these functions again. Okay. 
Okay, let me just get rid of this. And we notice, again, we have downloaded our program. Okay, so I'm going to use a, another piece of software called Remote Operator. And we're going to connect and we're going to bring up the screen of the controller. Okay, so here's our remote operator application. Again, this is available for download free of charge on our, uh, our download page under uh, support. Uh, first thing we need to do is configure the communication settings. And again, it's going to be the same we just used in VisiLogic. So we're going to select call. We'll put in our IP address. It was 10.2.2.56. The port is correct, and the PLC name was 570. And again, we can hit the check button. Good. So we'll hit OK. And now let's do one more test here. Let's go online with the controller. Okay. And we see we are online. We can see the online view. Let's try and connect now with remote operator. Okay, we see we were refused the connection. Uh, why did this happen? This happened because TCP IP, being a handshaking protocol, uh, we can only do one thing at a time. Now, this means if we're using socket 1 in this case, uh, we've connected with VisiLogic to socket 1 on port 20256. We can't do anything else at the same time. So I'm going to disconnect VisiLogic and go back to remote operator and hit run and we should see that we can connect to the controller good so here's our text here's where our image uh, should reside don't worry about that for this second uh, but it's again very important to point out that using TCP IP uh, we can only do one thing at a time and since we have four sockets if we want to use TCP IP we can do four independent things at the same time, but each socket can only perform one task at a time. So if socket 1 is reserved for communicating on port 20256 with a computer uh, in one location and a computer in another location, only one can have access to it at a time. And this is just the nature of TCP. Um, now, using remote access, uh, we see that we've br brought up the screen of the controller here. We have our text and our image, but our image uh, does not show up. We get a red X. <clears throat> Why is this? Uh, this is because we did not include a custom image file. Um, if we think about it, we don't want to transfer all of the uh, HMI variables, images, and whatnot uh, over the communication line. So let's uh, stop this. Let's go back to VisiLogic. And we'll select Project and create project files. We're going to use the HMI displays and we'll hit create. What this is going to do is build us a file that we can import. Uh, let's go to our webinar folder. Ethernet, okay. And we'll just call this uh, webinar images file. It is a, in this case a URC file. I'm going to hit save, and we've just created our image file. We'll go back to remote operator, and we will import it here as a cache file. Import cache file, image file. I'm sorry, I did not actually select the correct one. Okay. And let's try to go online again. And we see that we have our text and our image. Any questions about how or why we just did those things? Nope. 
Okay. Uh, good. So what have we done so far? We've showed how to set up simple communication uh, configuration with VisiLogic in the latter. We've explained uh, and talked about SB2. Uh, we've talked about the PLC name. Now let's talk about the PLC name a little more. Um, notice that we need this piece of information uh, in order to connect with, uh, so far, VisiLogic and Remote Operator. Um, we can't really say this is a password, but unless you have those uh, those three important things being the IP address, the port number, and the PLC name, we won't be able to connect to the controller. Now, it's not terribly easy to gain access to the PLC name. You either have to have uh, knowledge of it, if someone tells us what the PLC name is, um, the application. We can, of course, look at the VLP file and see here that the PLC name is 570. Uh, or the third option is we can go into the information mode in the controller, uh, if you're not familiar with this, it's, uh, it's the, the debug and uh, menu that we can get to by uh, holding down either the I key or our finger on the controller for five seconds. Um, one of the options in here is to review which, what the PLC name is of the controller. So if we have a user who can go up to the controller and view the PLC name, they might be able to connect to the controller. So I say this just uh, as knowledge that you need to know uh, in order to keep your system secure because we are connecting over the internet. Okay, um, we talked about the card in it and we talked about the socket in it. Now if we want to configure more than one socket, <coughs> we'll just grab another socket in it from the COM TCP and we'll place it here. Uh, I'm going to choose in this case socket 2. I'm going to say, oh, I'm sorry, let's use socket 3, uh, TCP, port 20257. This is the default port associated with socket 3. And we'll select slave. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to download this program again. Okay, so now we have two open sockets. We have uh, VisiLogic. I'm going to go online here. Uh, we are now connecting with VisiLogic to socket one, or remote operator. We'll make one quick change. We'll change this to seven. Okay, and we'll connect. And we're connected with VisiLogic and remote operator at the same time. So what we just did was we added one socket initialization, and we've created two channels that we can connect to. <clears throat> uh, the question is, uh, one question is, how do you know the socket number? Uh, we are deciding the socket number when we're creating the system. Uh, again, we have four sockets to choose from. 